the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everyone and welcome back to this tutorial video on predicting future values using forecast sheets in Excel. Now forecast sheets is actually one of the newer features that's available in Excel. So if you use Excel 2016, 2019 or Excel for Office 365 like I'm using here, you will have access to this feature. And if you want to just do a quick check before we get into this tutorial that you do have access to forecast sheets, You'll find it on the data ribbon in the forecast group. It's next to what if analysis and it's called forecast sheet. So just do a quick check to make sure that you have that before proceeding with this tutorial. Now forecast sheets is useful if you have historical time based data. You can use it to create a forecast and essentially predict future values. A forecast can help you predict trends, future sales, future requirements and needs, and it can also help you make better business decisions. And what happens is that when you create a forecast in Excel, it's going to create a new worksheet that contains a table that contains the historical and also the predicted future values, along with a chart that's going to nicely illustrate that data and all essentially with the click of one button. So it's a really powerful tool. So in this tutorial, I'm just going to show you a very quick example of how you can utilize forecast sheets to predict future values. So I've got my data here and as you can see, it is time based data. And what I mean by that is that I have listed out in column A, I have some dates and then in column B, I have some sales figures. And if you look at my dates, you can see that I log these sales figures in the spreadsheet every single day. And my aim here is to forecast what the sales will look like from January the 19th through to January the 24th. And I can do this very simply using that forecast sheet option. Now, the one thing that you have to be careful of here is that you need to make sure that you do enter two data series that correspond to each other. So in this case, date and sales. And these two correspond to each other because I'm essentially taking a reading of the sales every single day. Now, in order for this to work correctly, the timeline requires consistent intervals between its data points. So as I said, in this example, I'm analyzing sales of every day of the month. Now, you might choose to create a forecast for sales on the first of every month or maybe on the first every three months, so on and so forth. But it needs to be consistent in order for it to predict accurately. Now, if you don't necessarily have all of your sales figures for a particular date, then that's OK. You can have up to 30 percent of your data points missing and the forecast will still be accurate. So let's do a simple forecast of this data. First thing I need to do is I need to select both data series, including the cells where I currently don't have any values. I'm going to go up to my data tab and I'm going to click on forecast sheet. And you can see here it's already given me a really nice little line chart. So everything in blue are the sales that we have. And then you can see using the key, we've got the forecast sales, which is running through the middle. Then we have a lower confidence bound and an upper confidence bound. So it's allowing here or showing any predicted variations. But this main line running through the middle are the sales that it's forecasting based on the data that I have. Now, one thing you need to make sure of is that underneath here where it says forecast end, that you have the correct date in there. So if I look here, it says the 23rd of January. And if I look at my data, I actually also want to include or end this forecast on the 24th. So I'm going to click on the calendar. I'm just going to select 24th in order to change that. Now, you do also have a little options area down here where you can go in and you could start to modify other options. For example, you can select a date that you want the forecast to start. You can do things like detect seasonality. You can change the timeline range, the values range, so on and so forth. So you might want to jump into here and just check some of these. The most important ones, I believe, are the forecast end date and the forecast start date. So my forecast start date here is the 18th of January. Now, I already have a figure there for that, but I don't mind a little bit of overlap. So I'm going to leave that as it is. 
Now, if I decide that I don't want a line chart, I also have the option of switching this to a column chart as well, just by using this little toggle button at the top. So if I click column chart, you can see there I get the same prediction, but just displayed in a slightly different way. Now I'm going to stick with the line chart and I'm going to say create. And what we see here is it adds my line chart in. I'm just going to move that over. But then you can see it creates a table and it's giving me my forecasted sales and also my lower confidence bound and my upper confidence bound. So I can very easily see here based on this forecast, my predicted sales for the 24th of January are $3,491.23. And my lower confidence and upper confidence bound kind of gives me a range that those sales could fall into. So you can see with the click of one button, we've very quickly been able to obtain that information. So forecast sheet is a great option if predicting future values is something you do on a frequent basis. Now, if you want to understand a little bit more about what all of those options that we were just looking at mean, then you can refer to my blog post where we go through each one and you can see which ones you might want to change. But otherwise, that is it. Very straightforward, very simple. Thank you for watching this video tutorial and I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.